So by week to week, you just pick like five points um, that weren't good enough last week. Um, can be small, can be big points, can be points like Nash control, which is really yeah. important, but can also be something like level one warding. And you just track those th things each game. And if there's anything that um, sticks out, like a sore thumb, you address it to the team, you discuss it, and then that's how you prove day to day. Yeah, so, I guess specifically, like in doing that, we we talk at like the start of the training week, and we set out what those goals are, and then we will either if there's specific examples we want to show, we'll we can organize those and present them to the players, or if there's specific data that we want to show. We'll organize that and present it to the players at the start of a training day through the week just to yeah. introduce them to the ideas especially um the data work i think many people don't appreciate or don't know about there are so much stuff you can track in league for example you can track how long the difference is between the first step and the second step of a player like maybe he tilts yeah. too much during, during games and if he dies he dies again yeah. you can address that by showing the data you can see um, how is our hero power play how is the enemy's power play are we having yeah. issues there um, what we tracked, for example, for last week, beginning of the SES, was um, how long was the difference between tower taken? Like, how long do we take to take um, the second tower, the first one, and opponents on average? Um, there we can just easily see um, if there are any insufficiencies in our play. Um, it takes a lot of time, it's very boring to do, mm -hmm. um, but yet it's also something coaches have to do, and um, he especially is a really big help on that, really good eye on that, and, but also um, we don't like, as we said before, this separation, like in the end, we have responsibilities, but they're very homogeneous. So we talk together constantly. Um, I value his ideas very much. I value Alex's ideas very much. And then, you know, for that, we just work as a team. Yeah, so I think the main thing that we try to do is we try to make practice as similar to the LCS stage as possible. So that's the, like, the key thing for like our side of the scrim environment is making sure that we're doing as much as we can to make sure the players are kind of playing as seriously and as, as properly as they can. So when dealing with a new meta, you pretty much do it through playing. Like, it's okay to sit and read through patch notes and work out like what champions should statistically be strong and win rates and everything. But when it comes down to it, a lot of it comes down to like all the champions together. So it's pretty much looking at your scrims and then evolving like each and every day, going through what worked, what didn't, why it didn't work. And then maybe finding other things that work because those things work essentially. It just like trees down. So you you come to like the optimal solution at the end. And in that process, I think the most important part for us coaches because the actual champions are paper players. So they're gonna bring the idea in is that we have to troubleshoot why something didn't work or did work because very often we go into a game, we try something out, we lose the game and players are quick to say, okay, it doesn't work. Yeah. And then we have to be the reasonable mind behind it and say, okay, this is why it didn't work. Either yes, you're right and the champ or the strategy is just unavailable and we look somewhere else or no, we just misplayed, let's try it again. And um, I think that's just the biggest part we have to do as a, as a coaching staff. And what's well, really hard, I think, especially in a big patch like this, yeah. I think there are still so many things that no team right now knows. Yeah. So I can't really blame any coach who has like a bad draft in his weeks because we all learn by doing, as you said. Mm -hmm. And if you miss um, screaming a certain opponent who knows something, yeah, then there's no chance of you ever getting to the, to the knowledge, right? Um, so it's a process, a long process, and I think um, patch by patch we're getting closer there. Yeah, for sure. But I think overall we have a pretty good grasp right now. I think so. I think we're in a good place in the meta right now. I think at least how it's evolved in Europe. I think looking at the games we've played and the games that we've seen from other teams, I think we're in a good place. So when watching other regions, um, I think it's mostly about if you want to find points that address our weekly points. Let's yeah. say if you want to focus on a certain aspect in the game, we can look for LCK games or LPL games and that. Um, I think everybody in the team just basically watches League for fun as well. Yeah. That For means sure. everybody just watches the games and if you see something interesting, players are encouraged to bring it up in a, in a short presentation because in the end, if they present something, there's a higher chance it sticks with them yeah. than when we tell them something to do, like in school. Um, but yeah, um, we are monitoring closely over all the regions, but it's very rare that we like interrupt our weekly um, plan and then just bring something else up. 
it's just more we cut it down together and then in the end of another week we can just give them many different um, perspectives. Yeah, I think that's where data helps quite a bit because it lets you get all of the information you need and you can present it to the players so that they can sort of take the conversation on, like you present what champions are doing well and what aren't, and then we can compare that to what we're doing in training and maybe see if there's something we could do differently. I think for finding the meta, really, I think the teams that usually win on that are the teams that are good at experimenting, like they're creative and they have like wide champion pools, but also I think the teams that are sort of better at self-reflection. They don't get carried away with, okay, this worked because the other team trolled and died nine times for no reason. Like those teams tend to get carried away with the results of the scrims, where it's about really thinking deeply about what actually worked and why. Yeah, and I also think this whole race thing is extremely blown, blown out of proportions because in the end of the day, meta is a circumstance in how the game is played, but the same rules still apply, right? Mm -hmm. So the team which has a better knowledge about League of Legends as a game and how to approach the game yeah. will always have an advantage. So it's very rare that a meta shift actually makes the team worse than before. Yeah. if they are good at the game. Um, of course, we saw in the past, like, let's say, Worlds, Gangplank, and Mordecai's and those champions, of yeah, course, yeah. They, they they just explode the power scale. Or right now, with Heimer right Denier and exactly, yeah. Super Champions. But even then, you have to play the game properly, right? Yeah. And no champ in the world can help you if you don't know what tempo is or how to move around the map. Yeah. Um, sure. So I think that, that aspect of meta is not as important, um, but right now, um, was a pretty big shift. I think the biggest I've seen in my coaching career because yeah. I wasn't in the world as so coach. For sure. Um, but it's very interesting, for sure. I'm pretty confident. Yeah, I feel like our practice has gone well. I think it's been productive and it's getting more and more productive as time goes on. I think the players are very motivated and they're very creative, which helps. Oh, yeah. So I think we're in a good place right now. We just have to keep that going, really. Fully agree.